Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2012 season preview for the Pac-12. So let's just start with the recruiting trail to see how well these teams recruited this past offseason. In my opinion, the Stanford Cardinals have the best recruiting class in the entire Pac-12. A lot of these guys will contribute early as a freshman, but they also have the luxury of redshirting a couple guys. And speaking of redshirting a guy, you look at Barry Sanders Jr. This guy has all the amazing footwork, not quite like his dad, but in his own right, a very good player. Also runs a little bit more power. He can also catch the football out of the backfield. He's had, he has the luxury of redshirting this year, possibly. But look for next year, this guy to come in and have a phenomenal redshirt freshman campaign. I believe the Cardinal got themselves a true gem out of young Barry Sanders Jr. Mike Leach will throw the football all over the football field. That's why you go out and grab receivers to fit your system. Gabriel Marks fits that system to a T, 5'11", 175. Get the football in his hands quickly and he can take it the distance. Shaq Thompson has the size that you want in the safety, 6'2", 215. Also has the speed, so he has the range. He's very talented and is talented enough to come in and possibly start as a true freshman for the Huskies. You look at the Oregon Ducks getting a defensive line recruit. Arik Armstead, 6'8", 280, and a mean streak. This guy collapses the pocket and has to burst the closing speed to tackle. The quarterback should help bolster that Ducks defensive line. The Beavers are expecting a lot of Isaac Simalu. This guy is 6'4", 290. He's probably going to start at the left tackle position for Oregon State to help solidify that troubled offensive line. The Golden Bears got themselves a promising QB prospect in Zach Klein, 6'2", 195. Can throw well on the run, has this deep ball accuracy, and you love the mobility in and out of the pocket. So I think this guy's going to be a fine quarterback prospect for the Golden Bears. Jabari Ruffin is a freak of an athlete. This guy is 6'4", 230. Would have been an outstanding running back, a wide receiver, a tight end, any position on the field he could play. USC will utilize him at linebacker, and I think he's going to have a all-star career for the Trojans. The Bruins have to get to the quarterback, and that's why you go out and grab a guy like Ellis McCarthy, 6'5", 326. He's going to play on the interior of that defensive line, and they look to get pressure on the QB, and they look to be a force this year in the Pac-12. At 6'5", 200 pounds, Josh Kern is the imposing figure at the QB position, but why he fits for Arizona is that right there, he can run and he's going to fit that offense perfectly. I'm excited to see how DJ Farsa does in college. This guy has tremendous footwork, great balance, and has the breakaway speed should fit nicely in that Sun Devil backfield. You want to talk about a Namde Asenwa clone. You look at Yuri Wright, 6'2", 175. He's going to Colorado. He's going to a great situation. They love big corners. They love activity around the football. And he combines all of that with great tackling skill. So this guy is a fine prospect. Junior Salt is a versatile guy. He can play on the offensive line. He can play on the defensive line. I think he's slated to play on the defensive front for the Utes. Either way, he's going to be a phenomenal player. The Trojans have the best group of quarterbacks, in my opinion. You look at Matt Barkley, a guy that could potentially win the Heisman Trophy and also National Championship this year. But behind him, they have some solid backup guys. Look at guys like Matt Wedick and also Cody Kessler. These guys are competing for this backup spot, which more than likely means first in line for the starting spot next year. They're well stocked at the QB position. The Sun Devils have a star-studded backfield, in my opinion. Cameron Marsh is a guy that's very underrated in this, in this country. 5'11", 223 pounds of thumper. They also get DeAndre Lewis back, and that's going to be huge because he provides that explosiveness, that speed out of the backfield. And they bring in two impressive freshmen. I like DJ Foster, as mentioned earlier, and also Marion Grace. So both guys can contribute as a freshman. One will have the redshirt, but overall, there's some talent in the backfield. The Trojans potentially have three guys that are better than some receivers on NFL rosters. Marquise Lee, Robert Woods, and also George Foreman. There's a reason why people consider Matt Barkley one of the top quarterbacks in the country because of the weapons he has to throw the football to. The Trojans still have a very talented offensive line led by center Khalid Holmes and also left guard Marcus Martin. Both guys can do a great job of plowing open holes in the running game, and they also keep Matt Barkley well protected. The Utes do a great job of owning the line of scrimmage, partly because of the fact that they have Star Latui, who's going to be an outstanding first-round selection in the NFL draft, but also the Kruger brothers and Dave and Joe. All guys combined give the Utes a formidable front four. You won't find any linebackers, arguably, in the country that are better than the four starters 
for the Stanford Cardinal. Getting Shane Scott back is huge for this defense. We team him up next to Trent Murphy, AJ Tarpley, and also Chase Thomas. But don't forget about up and coming sophomore James Valters. I want you guys to keep an eye on him as the size that you want and the speed. So collectively, this is an impressive unit. There's no doubt in my mind that the Trojans have the best secondary in the conference. Armed with All-American TJ McDonald, outstanding free safety, but he also has a very good running mate and strong safety, Jawanza Starling. The Oregon Ducks special teams unit strike fear in the hearts of opponents. You look at returner DeAnthony Thomas. This guy can take it from zero to 100 in a heartbeat. So he's going to kill you on returns. And I like the punting game they have with Jackson Rice back there, one of the best punters in the country. So overall, I have to give the nod to the Oregon Ducks as the best unit in the Pac-12. Offensive MVP to me has to go to Keith Price. He did a great job last year in his first full season as a starter replacing Jake Locker. I think he's going to build on that this season and perhaps have an all-American type of campaign for the Huskies. Shane Scott is my defensive MVP for the Pac-12 Conference. I think this guy coming back from injury is going to have a phenomenal campaign and help lead that Stanford Cardinal defense. Jack Thompson gets my nod as the freshman of the year in the Pac-12. It says a lot about you as a football player, where you are athletically and mentally. If you can come in and start as a true freshman, this guy's going to be a fine player for the Huskies. Best pro prospect, I couldn't pick one, so I picked three. Matt Barkley is number one in my opinion. The fact that he is efficient with the football, I need to see him improve in clutch situations and take better throws downfield, but he still is a fine prospect. Also look at Keenan Allen being the number one receiver in the country in my opinion. No one's talking about this guy, but he's a tremendous playmaker, makes a lot of plays downfield. And Star Latui, defensive tackle for Utah, does a great job at the point of attack and also has athleticism similar to Haloti Nada. I have the Cougars finishing sixth in the Pac-12 North. New head coach Mike Leach has the tough challenge of injecting life into a sleeping giant of a program. The Cougars will boast one of the better quarterback wide receiver combinations this year with Jeff Toole and Marcus Wilson. A young stable of backs with fine room to run with the spread open attack. And the offensive line is the only question mark I have about the offense. Are they athletic enough to handle the switch to the spread? Defensively, I'm a big fan of Travis Long. I think he can put up double-digit sack numbers this year. Moving to the 3-4 puts him in better position to make those plays. But switching defenses will aid the secondary because of the pressure on the quarterback. Keep an eye on strong safety, Deion Buchanan. I think this guy should make all Pac-12. And I honestly believe six wins is not out of question for the guys up there in Pullman, Washington. Next up are the Beavers, and there's a lot to like about Oregon State. They're well coached, and defensively, there's some talent, especially in the secondary. Cornerback Jordan Poirier was an all Pac 12 performer at corner and returner. Defensive end Scott Christian was a freshman All American. Now, offensively, quarterback Sean Mannion should cut down on his interceptions and build on his solid freshman campaign. And I like the chemistry he has with wide receiver Marcus Wilson. So, losing James Rogers won't hurt as much. The biggest question I have are the running game and the offensive line. There's a light offensive line. They have to do something up front to keep defenders at bay. But you look at this team. They'll win more than three games, but I don't think it'll be enough to get these guys bowling in December. Next up are the Washington Huskies. I like quarterback Keith Price. This guy can play anywhere in the country. He has an outstanding young tight end to throw the football to. And Austin Safarian Jenkins had a phenomenal freshman campaign. He should put up huge numbers this year. Now, replacing running back Chris Polk is going to be a huge thing to do they have some questions right now in the running game and I also look at the offensive line there's three starters returning led by center drew schaefer the huskies will be able to put up points the question is will they be able to stop people from scoring 35 points a game won't cut it this year i'm a big fan of the athleticism that they have in the secondary though desmond trufant sean parker they're solid players and incoming freshman shaq thompson should help out a lot to cover off the back end of the defense. The front seven needs to play up to potential this season, especially with LSU on the slate for week two. They'll go bowling this year, but the defense will keep them from knocking on the door of the North Divisional title. All Zach Maynard has to do is to not turn the ball over and the offense will be fine. There's so much talent and breakaway threats in the backfield as well with running back Isi Sofell, 
CJ Anderson and Brendan Bigelow, all guys could be starters elsewhere. Wide receiver Keenan Allen is the best receiver in the nation, but he's the veteran leader amongst a boatload of newbies like true freshman Bryce Treggs and racer freshman Marcus Harris. The biggest question on offense has to be the offensive line. Defensive line is also a big question. They're replacing key guys on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And the linebacker core has to replace Kendricks, but keep an eye on Nick Forbes to step in and produce. I'm a big fan of their secondary as well. Mark Anthony, Steve Williams, do a sound job on the corners. I think Cal will be able to put up points, but getting pressure on the QB could hold them back from the title. I believe the Ducks' defense will be the one to get them to where they want to go this season. They have guys like linebacker Michael Clay, free safety John Boyette, and explosive Deion Jordan, and a future star at cornerback in Terrence Mitchell. And also keep an eye on freshman defensive end Eric Armstead. should contribute a lot early on in his career. Offensively, they'll still be Audubon fast, and I'm excited to see what Kenyon Bonner and DeAnthony Thomas can do this season. I think both guys can go over a thousand yards. Quarterback is a little unsettled in my opinion with Bennett and Mariota, but be prepared to see both guys this year. The interior of the offensive line is solid in my opinion and led by center Ronis Grassu. The tackles are where I have the question. Also, wide receiver will have plenty to prove as well. But with all that said, all those questions, I think the Ducks defense in the running game will lead these guys to, to a showdown with Stanford for the right to play for the Pac-12 title. People will think I'm crazy, but I don't think Stanford misses a beat at all this year. Offensively, yes, losing luck will sting, but the ground game can carry this team very far. Stephen Taylor is one of the best backs in the nation. Backing him up is Tyler Gaffney, a guy that's not a slouch as well. Out wide, they have lost guys like Fleener and Owusu, but they're still size and talent enough to continue to play above the rim with opposing defenders. Quarterback Brett Nottingham still has a solid offensive line in front of him. Losing to Castro is probably going to hurt more than losing Martin. Defensively, you can make a case for them having the best defense in the conference. Getting linebacker Shane Scott back is huge. Ben Garner, Terrence Stevens also do a great job up front. The secondary is a bit of a question mark. Youth movement on the corners. Keep an eye on freshman Alex Carter to probably come in and see a lot of minutes. I look for a run-heavy offense this year for the Colorado Buffaloes because of the talent they have in the backfield and the inexperience they have everywhere else on offense. Tailbacks Tony Jones and true freshman Davian Payne should help ease most of the pressure off the passing game. There's some question marks at QB and wide receiver. The offensive line is one that's solid despite the loss of Ryan Miller. Now defensively, they have to improve the run defense. Giving up five and a half yards a carry is not what you need in this division, in this conference. Shadera Uzo Dearby is a guy that I really like at the outside linebacker position. The secondary is still a talented group of individuals. Look for true freshman Yuri Wright to man one of the corner spots and impress. They'll be improved this year, but I don't think enough to make noise in the Pac-12 South. The Sun Devils must answer the big question at quarterback. Berkovici is a traditional dropback passer. Eubanks is a physically more imposing dual threat, and it looks like Eubanks will get the first crack at the QB spot. Whomever takes over as the starter has the benefit of having the best backfield in the Pac-12 at their disposal with Marshall Lewis and Grice Adjugo transfer and keep an eye on true freshman DJ Foster. Rebuilding year for the receivers and the offensive line, and those two question marks could limit the offense. Defensively, they're moving to a 3-3-5, so expect an adjustment period period there as well but expect newly moved outside linebacker junior on to produce big sack numbers this year a tough slip september slate coupled along with questions at qb receiver and offensive line the new defense point to rebuilding year out there in tempe change could be a good thing and i expect the wildcats to surprise some teams this year with the new offense and defense the question will lie in the receiving core as an expected drop off in production will happen because of the loss of their top wide receivers expect to see rushing numbers increase as always with the rich rodriguez attack defensively i expect an all-american campaign from safety tremaine von durant Cornerback Shaquille Robinson should have another fine year in the secondary, had four intercepts last year. The front six could be the question mark as well. Not a lot of size up front, but keep an eye on linebacker Travis Brian Wagner. This guy will be an outstanding player, and he'll probably lead in tackles. With the element of scheme surprise, I can see the Wildcats eking out a bowl appearance this season. Having quarterback Jordan Wynn return from injury will be huge for this ball club. This is a well 
balanced offense, but I need to see more progression from the passing game in order for this team to have a huge season this year. Running the football is their strong suit with John White, 1,500 yards last season, and I think they're going to look at the Juco incomers to fill the left tackle and right tackle spots. They have to pass protect better, 33 sacks given up. On the flanks, they have some solid receivers in Kenneth Scott and Devontae Christopher. They're big targets. Defensively, the defensive line is outstanding, led by future first-round pick Star Latuli at 6'4", 325 pounds, along with the Kruger brothers, Dave and Joe. The linebacker position poses the long question mark about the defense, and the defensive backs have some star power, especially with safety Brian Bleachin and Eric Rowe. So look for the use to be in every ball game this season. If they can improve the passing game, this could be a team that can contend with USC for the South Crown. The Bruins have the look of a sleeper team in the Pac-12 this year, in my opinion. The only question I have has to be the quarterback position. Can Hundley or Prince seize the job? They're talented enough in the backfield to ride that train all year long, so Franklin should easily top 1,000 yards, and Jones backing him up should get close to 500. Tight end Joseph Furia should become one of the best tight ends in the country. They're big and athletic up front on the offensive line, with especially with the return of black tackle. Xavier Suafilo should bolster the unit. I'm excited to see the defense this year. The move to the 3-4 will transform this talented but inconsistent defense tremendously. So keep an eye on Deton Jones, linebacker Eric Kendricks, and cornerback Aaron Hester to put up some all Pac-12 numbers with Jim Moore Jr. running his ball club. I think these guys can win eight games this year. The Trojans have been preparing themselves for this season for three years. They're armed and ready for a championship run. When Matt Barkley has weapons, he puts up numbers like he did last year. The wide receiver trio of Lee, Woods, and Farmer all have NFL potential. Tight end Randall Tepler was a second team All-American pick last year as a freshman. The offensive line will miss Ryan Khalil, but the coach staff is very excited about Andre Walker as well. Four other starters return on that offensive line led by second team freshman All-American guard Marcus Martin. In the backfield, Curtis McNeil will be joined by Solace Red, the Penn State transfer, giving him a formidable backfield. The Trojans offense will be one of the nation's best defensively. The lone question mark is the defensive line. Replacing sack master Nick Perry is a tough task. I'm excited about the young linebacking core with Dawson, Pullard, and Bailey. The latter two were freshman All-Americans. The corners were well protected by two outstanding safeties, one in All-American TJ McDonald and the other in Jawanza Starling. Look for USC to ride into the national championship game on the White Horse Traveler.